This video is not clickbait. These headphones are awesome, but there is one massive issue that most people will have with them. But before we talk about all that, let's go over what you can expect when you buy a pair of Bear Dynamic DT770s. Now these are the Bear Dynamic DT770s and they are the 250 ohm model. The other options are 32 ohm and 80 ohm. These are surprisingly light, coming in at only 270 grams, which I have to say is absolutely delightful. At first, that might make you feel like they're cheap, but on closer inspection, there are some hints that they're very much not. There is a bit of plastic on the cups and the connector for the adjustments, but the rest is all metal. And it's the little things like the velour cups that make these stand out. And the replaceable headband, very nice touch. And something that is the first to go on your headphones. Now there's just a touch of swivel to them, enough to keep them comfortable on any shape of head. And I also must mention the largest cups I've had the pleasure of using. I don't know how that can be turned into a meme, but I have a feeling somebody's going to. But they do allow your full ear to sit inside of them, but that's gonna come up a bit later in the comfort section. These are closed back headphones. The driver size is 45 millimeters, noise attenuation of 18 dB, frequency response of five hertz to 35 kilohertz, and of course that impedance is 250 ohms. Now, before we get into the ohms, let's discuss how great these things are. If you're used to the usual low impedance headphones, these things, they're a bit of a treat, especially if you're doing frequency specific listening. The low end can be a little loose if I'm gonna be picky and the mids are a touch thin, but that's a super snobby critique of these things, especially for the price. Now the highs are tight and the airiness will almost distract you. But what really stands out is the separation of those frequencies. You can clearly identify them and if your finger is on the EQ, boy, does that make that job easier. Instead of that muddy mix of audio, it all just seems to jump out at you, especially if you're listening to something complex like a piano or even a guitar. These are hands down the best sounding headphones that I've ever used, which leads us into comfort. Now that said, these aren't the most comfortable I have used, and cue the hate mail, please. Probably one of the most popular recommendations is due to the comfort. And I will say, yeah, they are comfortable, but this will be different for everyone. These are wicked light, which might be the big thing for some. The clamping pressure, it's pretty mid, which again, might be what some people want. But for me, it comes down to how warm the cups get, and I hadn't thought about it for some time. My ears sweat with these. And over the course of a couple hours hunched over a computer, Oh, it's just kind of gross and uncomfortable. But my ears don't sweat with the Rode NTH100. That said, that doesn't make these things a failure because they're gonna get a bunch of time on my head because the Rodes have nothing on these for sound quality. Okay, so let's go back to the specs and talk about what the impedance means with headphones. But let's not dig too much into the science though, okay? First up, impedance is resistance. And please don't shoot me for the upcoming oversimplification of this, but the higher the number of resistance, the more power is needed to drive the speaker. Now, there is a couple things in that last statement that will activate all the Dylans of this world, but stay with me. Most lower cost interfaces work off bus power, meaning they do not receive wall power. They operate off just whatever trickle of power they can get from the USB on your computer. Now, these will not have enough power to drive much more than your low impedance headphones, capping out between 50 and 80 ohms. And a good portion of the headphones under $150 are just that, 50 ohms and rarely over 80. Now, if you have an interface with wall power, you might, and I mean that might, be able to get enough power to drive these headphones. But then, not all headphone amps are built equal. So even then, you might not want a pair of these. You see, even with that extra power, you still require more gain to drive these things. And as we all know, gain isn't always good gain. So if you're driving with a crappy headphone amplifier, well, you might not like the sound as much. You really do need to do your research before you jump on a pair of these, which is why I do not recommend these to anyone. You really need all the information before you make a decision like this. I mean, yeah, but these are awesome and probably the best sounding audio you're gonna get before venturing into open back headphones. Again though, this video isn't clickbaity. I think for me, I will be going forward with a two tiered approach. My NTH 100s for everyday use, like the morning show and just all the non listening essential stuff. And when the EQ comes out, 
I'm gonna be switching over to these. Even from someone like me who has a ton of headphones at arm's reach, this was an awesome purchase. So let me know, what headphone outputs do you have going on? Is critical listening that important to your projects? Let me know down below. And if you're curious about my favorite headphones, you can see my review up here. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.